What's that name? Where you from? Good to meet you. Would you like a can? Here's a smoke and the yoke. Let's be friends forever. Ever. All right, lads. Um, Dublin Hospital is brilliant. Oh, it is you. so much fun. Um, and, I mean, Dublin is, comes alive in the film. It's, it's very much of the summer and all the things. But you actually get great weather. What the hell? That was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, like, what? Because the weather's so changeable in Dublin. You'd shoot something in the morning, and, like, not even. Ten minutes later, the clouds had changed, so the light had changed. You'd have to go back and redo it, like, you know. So that was actually battling against the weather was a huge thing. Yeah, and my yeah. last day. From my last day in St. Mickens Park. And oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all I wanted to get to him, but would do was go and have a, uh, a Bunsen. Do you remember? Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was thinking, oh, no. St. Mickens Park, as we, we shot it, and I wrote it in the script. It was like, where's a place in Dublin where this could happen? Because um, you're, you're tracking the kind of the geography of the movie when you're writing it as well. You know, you go, well, it's all set in the city. It has to follow that geography. And if anybody knows the city, they have to go, you can't kind of skip ahead because things like that annoy me and I know they annoy Dave Tyne and the director you know where someone would go oh you walked off that street and walked onto another so we chose Mickens Park but of course that's where the fruit and veg market is so we were trying to shoot this really kind of you know not tender but like kind of you know dramatic scene where he's basically uh, you know telling his life story uh, the character of Daniel and of course all you can hear is beep you know, like, like and uh, the rain. Uh, I remember and all, the yeah. weather. The weather was shocking that day. Yeah, it started yeah. to rain, and we thought we wouldn't get finished. Thought we'd have to come back, and so yeah, we got away with it a few magic times. Magic of filmmaking. Yeah, well, that's one of the beautiful things about that. What I was going to compliment you on the fact that the geography works, which is uh, which is uh, brilliant for an Irish film because oh, right. you only the only real one that you see is Haywire where they actually have a, a, a run down through the streets and St Stephen's Green and it follows naturally. Yeah, yeah, naturally, yeah. But sometimes you see Lewis is running down Leeson Street and you're yes. like, this is not right. And yeah. then they get off and they're in another place. And I always wonder as well because anybody who's ever been to Dublin, like in, in Dublin there's thousands of people, and the majority of the population of Ireland have been in Dublin, so they're going to know. So instantaneously I think anything like that that takes you out of the narrative, you know, you know, audiences like that, that's actually more arresting sometimes when you're watching something. So I think it was really important on myself and Dave uh, when he was directing it, like, you know, the, the, the topography, is that what you call it? Don't ask me, mate. You're don't know. Uh, it, it, looked, it looked right and it was actually true, you know, to what it is. Because yeah. uh, Dublin's a character in the film as well, you know? Absolutely. And then you, you, by expanding it out from the play, that must have put a lot of pressure on you to change locations and to change. Yeah, because like things are, you know, because it, it is a kind of thing, it's, it's a, movies are made by a multitude of people and, you know, departments are going, could we, this would be a great scene, but could we have it in some place that's smaller to <laughs> half the amount, you know what I mean, yeah, which is fair enough. Uh, but yeah, there was, but actually the places in the play have almost correlated exactly to the place in the movie, um, almost in the end And that was because the production team and the, and the people who are making the film wanted to stay as true to the play and the geography of the play and, and what happens as possible, which isn't, which is quite a hard thing to do. Is a lot of people just wouldn't bother doing that; they wouldn't care. But the producers we have, Mike Donnelly and Dave Lee, they really kind of moved heaven and earth in order to make that happen, you know. Yeah, and then that allowed you to bring in a lot more people in to play the various different characters as mm. well, so that uh, it's eased some of the pressure on yourselves. Is there any of them that you missed? Um, yeah, some characters, you know, I'd love to have maybe played Dave the Rave as well, but you can't do both, and and. You're handing them over to some seriously good actors, but if someone hands you the script of Dublin Old School and you read it and you see the character of Daniel on the page, you go, "Yeah, I love that," because it's a fabulous part. There's a kind of a full uh, an opportunity to kind of fully change. It's so far away from you know anywhere that I've ever been in my life. So you know it's a great opportunity and it's a fantastic part to get to play. Very very lucky to have played it. To get into that headspace, did you have to do any research for the role? Yeah, I did some stuff, yeah. I did a lot of stuff. You did a lot of I stuff? Did, or you did, did a lot? No, I did, some, I, did, I did a lot of, yeah, I, I did. I did a lot of sort of, uh, I wanted to physically change myself an awful lot and uh, a few different things that I did. And I never, you know, I wouldn't let myself be comfortable on set. And just little things and um, I talked about it enough, but like I, I lost like a two and a half stone to do the role and different things. But it's worth it because you, you you're enjoying it as well, you know. And I think I'd already saw, always said that. What was the idea of the film ever happening? I remember saying it to you, didn't I? I was going, well, if it happens, yeah. oh, that's what I'll do. I'd love to do that. I'd love to. I'd love to have the chance. I'd love to have producers and directors who are willing to allow me the chance to, to physically, I guess, change myself a little. Yeah. It's cool. It's cool. It's really. There's a there's a feat like for someone like me, like it's 
whenever you're doing let's say a drawing or film there's, there's always a transformative quality to whatever you're doing obviously because you're transforming yourself into another character but there's also a feat of athleticism that's on the part of Ian you know it's like a boxer you know shedding pounds in order for a fight you know so that in itself is something that usually actors are usually just called upon to be actors you know what I mean but they're also kind of athletes in a way so that was really the kind of thing that Ian did like he really did commit to it that fully and, uh, and drop heavily but you know you can do everything up to a point, like, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Like, yeah, you know, you're obviously not going to go out and yeah. try heroin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, so, yeah. yeah. More but than once. Do your two, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the two of you are the centre of it, and the, the, you're, together, you're just brilliant as a, as a double act. And, like, and, and I, I wish you the very best of luck with the film. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thanks, no, thank you. Really appreciate thank that. that. You and me, God. Give me that. Young people of Ireland, wreck the fucking car! What has he got his top off? Top? Never any excuse for a man to take his top off and double.